Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the invocation prayer by Father Volodymyr Steliak of St. Andrew's Ukrainian Orthodox Cathedral and remain standing for the national anthems. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord and Master of our life, you have blessed Ukraine, its lands, with abundant blessings, with rich soil and endless blessings. You have blessed its people with wisdom, with integrity, Ingenuity, ingenuity to create and to produce. We are blessed today to be amidst such people. You have blessed Ukrainians not to hate, to love, to love you, love life, love beauty. In spite of those blessings, its riches, in spite of its wealth, Ukraine sometimes had to starve from hunger. A page that we called Holodomor as we celebrate these days. Today we are here to celebrate Ukraine and its ethos. We humbly bring our supplications to you to bless those who care for Ukraine for its people, for there is a noble and blessed cause. For yours is the kingdom, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Oče naš, čo je Syn na nebesah, nechaj svjetecija imja Tvoje, nechaj prejde carstvo Tvoje, nechaj bude volja Tvoja, jak na nebi, tak i na zemlji. Hlip naš nasušne, daj nam se hodnje, i proste nam provene naši, jak i my proščajemo venovacem našem. I ne vede nas v spokusu, ali vezvole nas vid lukavoho. Gospod Isuse Hriste, Bože naš, prenosimo Tobi bezmežnu vdjašnjišt za blostovidnje, ki nas laješ nad našo ukrajinsko državo. Za blostovidnje, ki te nas laješ nad ljudmi, človekiju, ženog, djetej, Сьогодні особливо приносимо вдячність за тих, які сьогодні взірцево, унікальний і свій спосіб приносять добробут світу, який сьогодні між нами. Ти поблагословив нас і український нарід любити, любити життя, любити красоту. Молимось, Сьогодні дати нам можливість і дати нам силу служити вірно і чесно нашому українському народі. Приносимо вдячність тим, які сьогодні сьогодні тут присутні. Бо твоя слава, честь, поклоніння. Амінь. Смачного. Щиро дякуємо.
Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats and welcome Nadia McConnell, president of the U.S.-Ukraine Foundation. Good evening. Thank you, Father Silak, for your prayer, and a special thanks to our local choir, Spiuzitya. Welcome to the second annual Ukraine in Washington, being held on December 1. This is the 21st anniversary when 93% of Ukraine citizens voted for independence during the referendum. We thank Washington Mayor Gray for again declaring this day, today, Day of Ukraine in Washington. I extend here my sincere gratitude to the Embassy of Ukraine for their supportive partnership in this event. To all of our partners and sponsors, my deepest gratitude. You made this possible. Thank you so very much. Special thank you to our partners, Natalie Shear and Associates, Natalie, and Irena Teluk of Iroset. And of course, as always, I am in total debt to the Foundation staff for their fabulous, tireless efforts. John Kuhn, Markian Belinsky, and Yulia Solovey. This afternoon, we concluded a two-day conference discussing leadership in a global world. As part of this conference, we launched a new initiative identifying 40 leaders, emerging leaders under the age of 40. Uh, there were two criteria. Not only should they have reached some sort of professional accomplishments, but they are also exhibiting some level of individual social responsibility and making contributions to their communities and to the development of Ukraine. I would like each of them to stand. We have Lesha Orbech. Is Lesha here? Hey. Member of our parliament. I don't think that's Lesha. <laughs> George Kurbanov, who also was named by Forbes as one of the top entrepreneurs in Ukraine under the age of 25. Uh, and then we have uh, Alexei Koval and Vasil Miroslochenko, and then Alexander Kapital. So please, you're going to stand and recognize them. But tonight, we celebrate the people of Ukraine and people whose roots are in Ukraine and their achievements. Some of you have asked us at the foundation, why do we do this? We do this because since Ukraine became independent, there is much to celebrate about the people of Ukraine. And after many long decades, there is a public understanding that there is a Ukraine, and there are citizens of Ukraine, and this is not a trivial matter. For the dark dec decades of the Soviet Union, Ukraine and her citizens were brushed out of existence. To the outside world, there were Russians and Soviets. In 1986, at the time of the Chernobyl catastrophe and during the subsequent cover-up, we were unable to send any type of aid assistance. What assistance was allowed by the Kremlin was routed to Moscow. This would be like sending aid after 9-11, not to New York, but to Columbus, Ohio. And the reality is that assistance delayed is and was assistance denied. Western aid was denied to Ukraine, and even the identity of the people of Ukraine was denied them. It was not until years later we were actually able to get aid to Ukraine and her citizens. In 1987, a famous comic traveled the United States, regularly introducing himself as being from Odessa, Russia. The examples of the Kremlin's brushing out of existence, the people of Ukraine, are endless. So why do we do this? We do this 
uh, that is, we undertake these Ukraine and Washington events be because Ukraine has an extraordinary history of current uh, wealth of citizens of wonderful accomplishments. And indeed today, after 25 years, we have the honor to celebrate the accomplishment of a talented entertainment from Odessa, Ukraine. Special joy for me to have Maxim here. <clears throat> in 1988, instead of celebrating the millennium of Christianity in Ukraine in mostly religious ceremonies and services, we probably spent 80% of our time, many of you here, fighting a political and propaganda war as the Kremlin first sought to claim the millennium for the 70-year-old godless Soviet Union and then the 760-year-old Russia. We do this because tonight we will also honor a man who has been inducted into the Invention Hall of Fame, Inventors Hall of Fame, as the first such inventor celebrated as having Ukrainian roots. But the fact is, that with his induction, our honoree proudly and deservedly joined in the Hall of Fame, Ukrainian Igor Sikorsky, who at the time of his induction was identified as from Kiev, Russia. So we do this tonight and every day since Ukraine's independence because we can and because we must reclaim and celebrate the many people of Ukraine past and present, who have made and are making significant contributions in all spheres of human endeavor. So now, it is my pleasure to introduce our partner for, this, for these two days uh, from the Embassy of Ukraine in the United States, Ambassador Wancic. Dear Nadia McConnell, Ambassador Taft, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Let me start with words of appreciation to the organizers of the Ukrainian Washington Conference 2012 and this gala. Please join me in the expression of gratitude to Mrs. Nadia McConnell and staff of the US Ukraine Foundation. In, in my view, the conference was a great success. For two days, we experienced active discussions where representatives of government, business, and civic society presented their views on the future of Ukraine's domestic and foreign policy, as well as Ukraine-US relations. The great number of the distinguished guests present here today both from Ukraine and the United States, the leaders of politics, business, as well as art and culture, demonstrates the strengths of our ties and the big potential of our relations of strategic partnership between Ukraine and the United States. I am glad that this conference has transformed into an annual event, attracting intellectual and political elites of Ukraine and America, re resulting in synergy of ideas that would benefit both our nations. Dear friends, today we celebrate the day of the 1st of December 1991, when people of Ukraine chose to live as free nation. This goal set 21 years ago would be much harder to achieve without the support of the United States, which we felt from the day one of our independence. For all years of Ukraine's independence, 
America has been taking a position of guarantee of sovereignty, territorial integrity, and inviolability of frontiers of Ukraine. On our part, the U.S. has been and will continue to be in the future a country of special priority to Ukraine's foreign policy. Our countries define their relations, relationship as a strategic partnership, and time has proven that this is not a mere declaration. It also means practical cooperation throughout the wide spectrum of political, security, social, and economic issues, interaction which is mutually beneficial not only for our nations, but also has significant positive consequences for the rest of the world. From this, from this standpoint, one of the areas of Ukraine-US cooperation marked with important decisions and actions is global security. 18 years ago, Ukraine voluntarily gave up the world's third largest nuclear arsenal. This year, upon agreement between President Yanukovych and Obama, Ukraine removed from its territory the stocks of highly enriched uranium. We also serve as a reliable partner of the United States in peacekeeping operations, including those under UN, NATO, and EU auspices. Ukraine continues to support other US efforts aimed at making the world we live in a safer place particularly in the areas of combating international terrorism, piracy, drug trafficking, and organized crime. Active cultural and humanitarian exchanges between our countries have already become a good tradition. There are multiple visits and active cooperation among Ukrainian and American universities, sister cities, religious groups, artists, and people of goodwill. A 10-year U.S. visas for Ukrainians, which we hope will be issued in the near future, combined with the visa-free regime to entry to Ukraine for U.S. citizens, provide hassle-free environment for continued expansion of people-to-people -people contacts. Currently, the U.S. is among top 10 largest investors in our country. American companies bring not only capital, but also international know-how of business modern management techniques, new information and production technologies, software, and other intangible assets. We are happy that Chevron and ExxonMobil will start to operate in Ukraine soon, which is a good sign for strengthening U Ukrainian energy security. We are also interested in broader participation of American companies in investment projects in agriculture. Definitely, Ukraine is interested in cooperation with the United States in the area of democracy and human rights. The aim of the systemic reforms initiated by and implemented by current government is to transform my country into an economically prosperous, democratic European state, an integral part of the United Europe. Priority number one of our internal and foreign policy is integration into European Union, and Ukraine will do its best to be to, uh, it will do its best to continue to be a reliable partner of the United States of America. Dear friends, the Christmas and holiday season is already here. This conference is true Christmas gifts for the Ukrainian American relations. We need more friends for our country, and I'm certain that this is exactly the kind of people we have in this, in this room tonight. Once again, thanking the organizers and sponsors of this conference, I hope that this forum will become a good tradition in Ukraine-US relations, which will be frequented by leaders of politics and business of both countries. Thank you for your attention, and please enjoy the evening. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador Motsik. And now it is my pleasure to introduce this evening's Masters of Ceremony. Sine Simpson is known to most of us in Washington area 
is an award-winning anchor for ABC7 WJLA TV. She has covered world news and entertainment from the historic wedding of Prince William and Kate Middleton to the red carpet of the 2011 Oscars. She has done exclusive interviews with Michelle Obama, Diane Sawyer, Maya Angelou, and Oprah. She also has a deep commitment to community and has received a congressional award for her service. She loves to travel and enjoys adventure sports, constantly looking for places to hand glide, rock climb, swim with sharks, or try something new and even more daring. There are places in Ukraine that you could find interesting and daring. <laughs> Sine, we hope that after tonight, you will add the U.S.-Ukraine Foundation Gala to your something new, maybe not daring, but fun new list. Joining Sine as Master of Ceremonies is Ambassador Roman Popadyuk, a familiar face to most of us. Today, December 1, marks the 25th anniversary of Ukraine's independence vote. It is in this context and with great pride that I note that Roman was the first U.S. ambassador to Ukraine and was therefore instrumental in establishing the foundation of the strategic partnership between Kiev and Washington. Upon leaving government, Roman served for 14 years as executive director of the George H.W. Library Foundation, and most recently he joined Bingham Consulting. We at the foundation are very grateful for his continuing personal support of our efforts and for agreeing to once again serve both as joint master of ceremonies and chair of the overall event. Friends, please welcome Sine Simpson and Roman Popadyuk. Thank you so much for that lovely introduction. It's great to be here with you this evening. What a beautiful crowd we have here. It actually feels very familiar to me. Each year I cover the Oscars and it, it's a lot like this actually. <laughs> yeah, it's very similar in fact. Uh, the one difference being, yes, give yourselves a round of applause for looking I, amazing. Actually, Sine, I, I thought this is much better than the Oscars. Oh. Well, I stand corrected. You're right. Absolutely. Uh, there, there's one difference, though, from the Oscars, which is that we already know who the winners are this evening. <laughs> Slight difference. Well, it's an honor to celebrate this evening some of the achievements by the people of Ukraine and those of Ukrainian descent. But first, we'd like to acknowledge some of the many VIPs who are joining us this evening. Sine, it's a great pleasure to be uh, on the stage at the same time with you. I'm glad we can share this uh, task uh, that Nadja McConnell has assigned to us. Yes. Uh, we have a number of representatives of the diplomatic corps and presence. Of course, I'd like to go through the list uh, briefly. We, of course, already have met Ambassador Motsik, who's the Ukrainian ambassador to the United States. I think another round of applause is due to the great work that the ambassador is doing. We also have with us the U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine and a good friend of mine, John Teft. We also have a number of former ambassadors here in town. A good friend of mine, also former ambassador of Ukraine to the United States, Oleg Shamshur. And we have two former ambassadors, my successors in Ukraine. We have Ambassador Bill Miller. Bill's, where's Bill, is Bill here? Okay, maybe he didn't make it yet. We also have Steve Pfeiffer, Ambassador Pfeiffer. And we have an extra special guest with us, the Ambassador to, of Montenegro to the United States, Ambassador Darmanovich. Where are you? There's the Ambassador. In addition, we have uh, some representatives from the Ukrainian government. I'd like to note that we have with us the city administrator for the city of Kiev and a good friend, Alexander Popov. <laughs> Joining Mr. Popov is his deputy, Alexander Mazurkovich. <laughs> Planning to be with us tonight was Sergei Arbozov, who is the director of the National Bank of Ukraine. Unfortunately, he could not make it, but he does send his greetings, which will be read to us by his deputy, Vira Rikachevska. Vera. A 
Change in plans, I guess. Okay. <laughs> anyway, she sends her greetings. Well just She'll one moment, we just wanted to make one more acknowledgement. Uh, Representative John Conlon and his lovely wife Julia are here with us this evening. So glad to have you here. Okay. I'm supposed to read my script now. <laughs> okay, I think we did that. All right. Yeah. So we'll we're, turn we're, things we're over now right. to the Deputy we're, Governor. Absolutely. Well, she's going to read it later. Now, now, okay. okay. Later. Вельми шановне товариство, вельми шановна пані Надія, вітаю всіх нас сьогоднішнім святом. Сьогодні дійсно свято у нас, перше грудня, коли ми святкуємо практично День народження України, референдум, коли було оголошено і народом визначено свої сподівання на розвиток, на демократію, на краще життя. Honorable friends, uh, Mr. Ndia, uh, we are uh, very welcome uh, this evening. Uh, we are glad uh, to, to be here on the occasion of this uh, day, uh, December 1st, which is in fact Ukraine's birthday when we're, we're able to celebrate the new birth or renaissance of our country. Від голови Національного банку Сергія Арбузова ми вчора передали офіційне вітання на відкриття конференції. Yesterday we passed on Mr. Arbuzov's, uh, Mr. Arbuzov's greeting, official greeting to the uh, conference. Того в його вітанні акцентується увага, по-перше, і ще раз вітання з днем референдуму, і акцентується увага, що це є дуже символічно, що ця конференція проходить в такі дні. Among the points that he emphasized and stressed especially was the fact that the conference was taking place on this key date for Ukraine, December 1st, which is most appropriate. Також коротко сказано ті досягнення, які на сьогоднішній день є в Україні. Also, the uh, greeting contained an overview of uh, Ukraine's achievements to date. І разом з тим, в посланні говориться про те, що в Україні багато ще треба зробити. І разом з тим, конференція – один з тих заходів, де Україну в світі повинні почути, зрозуміти. But also the greeting acknowledged uh, the many things that still remain to be done in Ukraine and uh, in what uh, areas of activity or uh, cooperation Ukraine must be heard and seen to be more active uh, in the international community. Because Ukraine has all of the potential to uh, find a right, its rightful and appropriate place in a global community. Ну, від себе можу додати, що ми вже два дні дуже активної роботи, і, як на мій погляд, конференція виконала дуже позитивно свою функцію. Personally, I would like to add that I found these past two days very uh, uh, interesting, very fruitful, very informative, and I can say, or rather assert even, that the uh, conference achieved its goal. Ми почули багато доповідей, ми почули про ті проблеми, які є в Україні, і про них треба відкрито говорити. Разом з тим, ми почули багато позитивних речей, тих зрушень, які на сьогоднішній день є в Україні. Ми почули багато презентацій, деякі з них фокусували на проблемах, і вони мають бути відмітні, що залишаються відбувати, але ми також uh, heard uh, about a lot of achievements uh, that have been attained by Ukraine. І я думаю, що всі тут зійшлися на одній думці, у всякому випадку та, яка звучала з наших доповідей, що в Україні є величезний потенціал економічний, людський, природний. And I think that everybody, every participant, everybody uh, gathered uh, here to this evening uh, has come to the conclusion that yes, Ukraine has tremendous potential, tremendous capabilities, both uh, human, intellectual resources, natural resources. І я думаю, що за результатами цієї конференції теж буде враховано для подаль як подальший план дій для подальшої роботи. А разом з тим, будь ласка. 
and I'm convinced that uh, the conclusions or some of the issues that were raised, uh, uh, proposals suggested during a conference, will be included in our work. І я думаю, що великим досягненням буде конференції, результатом конференції для багатьох, якщо люди більше вірять і повірять Україні. І я думаю, що ми багато за ці дні обговорили, що Україні потрібно довіряти, що ситуація є набагато кращою, як часом ми чуємо чисто з преси. And I think one of the uh, great achievements of this conference will be in fact if the people begin to believe more in Ukraine because you need to believe more in Ukraine in what it can achieve and there are a lot more positive things uh, than you sometimes read or hear from the media. So again, uh, I welcome us or greet us uh, on the occasion of this uh, uh, great day. Obviously, uh, I would like to say uh, 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 long live Ukraine. Перебуваючи тут на другому континенті в на цій території, звичайно, за Сполучені Штати як Америки. And also I would like to say uh, that uh, long live the United States since I find myself here on the continent uh, on another continent in the United States of America. За те плідне співробітництво, яке певною мірою є, але на яке ми більше сподіваємося ще. And uh, I'd also like to, to thank you essentially for this uh, fruitful cooperation that we have seen but uh, hope that uh, uh, it will continue and in fact increase. Welcome to Ukraine. <laughs> Vida, thank you very much for that warm greetings and for that very positive evaluation of the conference. Sine? Well, as we all know, there are so many exciting things that are going on in the world of business and technology, inventions really changing the way that we do things, and fostering better communication between people. We certainly live in an age of gadgets that some of them we carry in our hands, some of them we carry in our purses or our bags, and uh, they've become indispensable to so many of us. Um, in fact, I'm sure I'm not the only one here today who suffers from nomophobia, the fear of being without your cell phone. It's actually become a true medical condition. But our first star is a great example of teamwork. Microsoft sponsors a showcase for student-designed innovations which are meant to unleash the power of technology to benefit a community or perhaps the entire planet. A team of Ukrainian students from Donetsk called the Quad Squad, consisting of Maxim Mosika, Valery Yasakov, Anton Pasternikov, Anton Stepanov, won first place in the software design category for an innovation called Ensemble Talk. It's very impressive. The concept allows a deaf person to communicate verbally using a smartphone application and gloves, which are equipped with 13 sensors. So the sensors are able to then translate sign language into real-time speech. And as a result of this innovation, Quad Squad took home the 2012 Microsoft Imagine Cup. Absolutely. Very, very impressive. They received that award in Sydney, Australia. And if I can direct you to the monitors, let's take a look at a video that shows a little more about how this innovation works. The first century is the age of technology, the age of communication. More than 40 million people suffer from hearing and speech impairments. To communicate, they have to use sign language. Alas, very few people understand them and they feel isolated. Our team has developed an able talk project to solve the language barrier between the sign language users and the rest of the world.
smartphone and a pair of our special sensory gloves is all that is needed. Now here's how our system works. The gloves capture the hand movements and transmit the movement pattern, the sign itself, to the mobile device. Then our application matches the incoming pattern with stored signs and plays the sound for that sign. The first part of the whole process is capturing the hand movements. This is implemented completely by our sensory gloves. To do this, we have equipped each of them with numerous flex sensors that capture finger movements and a compass, a gyroscope and an accelerometer, which are used to define the position of the gloves in space. These sensors gather raw data and then transmit it to the microcontroller. The microcontroller then normalizes that data and transmits it to a mobile device via the Bluetooth module. That's where the signs are being recognized and matched to the existing signs and patterns. When the pattern is recognized, the text equivalent of the sign is generated. Then, using Microsoft Speech API and Bing API, the sound is played via the mobile device sound system. That's how we give voice to 40 million people. We estimate initial startup cost at $40,000, the base cost of our prototype of $20 per glove in mass production, and $200 per glove sales price. This is not future, this is reality. Enable talk, and the whole world will hear you. Is that not amazing? Incredible. Well, the U.S. Ukraine Foundation so pleased this evening to present a Star of Ukraine Award to the Quad Squad members who are here with us tonight. We have Maxim Osika, Anton Pesternikov, and Anton Stepanov. Congratulations. Good evening. We're really excited to be here. Just one small correction. Uh, uh, Valeria Sakov, not Anton Stepanov. Uh, so, a bit of mix-up. We're really grateful and really excited and thankful to uh, US Ukraine Foundation and Nadia McConnell for inviting us here. And we're really honored to receive this award. And uh, we're just so happy and proud to represent our country, Ukraine, especially here in Washington, D.C., the capital of the United States, the uh, capital of liberty, freedom, rule of law, the shining city up on a hill. We are so grateful and so excited. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Well, our next star recipient is Dr. Lubomir Romankiv. He's in, you have to forgive my, uh, my pronunciations. I got a little tutorial beforehand, but I'm doing my best here. But he's a IBM fellow and researcher who's listed as co-inventor on over 65 US patents. In March of this year, he was inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame as one of 10 inventors, including Steve Jobs. Much of his work is centered on magnetic materials, reflective displays, and copper plating. He's been honored with many awards and is active in various professional societies and organizations, most notably serving as the chief scout for the Plast Ukrainian World Scout Organization, which celebrated its 100th anniversary in Lviv, Ukraine. Now, Dr. Roman Kiev's roots are from Jovaka, Jovka, Jovkava, Jovkava? One more, okay, hold on. Jovkava. Lviv, a blessed Ukraine. He immigrated to Canada in 1948. After being accepted to MIT, he then moved to the United States in 1957. And in 1962, began his work at IBM, where he's been working in research for 50 years. He is a marvelous example of brilliance and perseverance. Please take a look at this brief video clip. 
I feel very, very happy. I really, I think my, I was told that uh, uh, Dave, and Tom, Dave Thompson and I are about 540th uh, people that are being inducted. So that's a very, very big honor. And I really appreciate it. And I do appreciate IBM. Of course, when they, uh, when we first built the heads, and they worked. Uh, Dave Thompson came to my office, and he brought me a so sorcerer's head and put it on my head. <laughs> he says, "Your magic worked." <laughs> But I predicted that. Uh, I would say at the beginning, no. I didn't really know where, where it would take us. Uh, but uh, after a while, I, I understood, yes, it's being appreciated. It's important. The question is, how far can it take us? Of course, when I understood IBM was uh, submitting her, her names to the uh, Hall of Fame, uh, the question was how many years, because there is a waiting list of thousands of people, and uh, how many years is it going to be? So I'd occasionally joke, I'd say, well, maybe we'll get it but posthumously. <laughs> but it turned out still in my lifetime, so <laughs> that much better. <laughs> And now for his remarkable work and contributions, the U.S.-Ukraine Foundation is honored to present Dr. Roman Kiev with its Star of Ukraine Award. I would like to, first of all, thank my father, Ivan, and my mother, Nadia, who felt it important that after we have arrived in Canada, in three days after presence in Canada, I was already back in high school. They felt education was critically important because my father, a lawyer from Ukraine, and my mother, a high school teacher, had to work first jobs as office cleaners and cooks. So they felt education was important. I would like to thank my engineering dean from the University of Alberta for making it important to say that when you work, do science work. Make sure you understand the path to production in engineering, science work that doesn't pay your salary and salaries of many other people is not worth working on. I would like to thank IBM for offering me a position, offering me a position that I was allowed to exercise my thoughts and my imagination that led to production of the first tin film heads that resulted to this day in six orders of magnitude increase in density of magnetic recording and six orders of magnitude smaller, uh, lower cost. And at this time, I would like also to leave you with a thought. When you hit your key on the computer and you see your first picture, think IBM, Lubomir Romanku and a group of 50 people who created it. Thank you very much.